today I'm taking you back to the basics. Now, in all honesty, this recipe is nothing basic because it requires two things that are very important, time and patience. Chef Love is here. Today I'm gonna walk you by brown stock. More specifically, brown beef stock. Let's go. Before we get started, we want to make sure that we preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I've preheated my oven for at least 10 minutes now. Uh, so you do want to make sure you get that started so that the, when you put your bones in, it's a speedy process. Here we have seven pounds of beef rib bones, seven pounds of beef rib bones. Along with our rib bones, we have our standard mirepoix, which is one part onion, half a part carrot, half a part celery, as well as our standard sachet, parsley stems, thyme, garlic, bay leaf, and black peppercorn. And lastly, our new ingredient, which will give our stock color and flavor, is our tomato paste. Here I have six ounces of tomato paste, uh, and any brand will do. Here I have a 12 ounce can of uh, Kroger. Uh, other things that we need for this stock are six quarts of water. Now six quarts translates to one gallon and a half of water. And make sure this water is cold. And then lastly are utensils and other things. We have two towels, make sure they're dry, uh, some uh, tongs, a spatula, a ladle, and a bowl to capture any of the unwanted ingredients from the stock. So let's get started. So we do want to make sure that these bones get a nice caramel color. Uh, that does take some time, however. So we're starting the oven again at 425. These bones will go roughly for 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, it really depends on the oven, uh, the heat that is circulating in there, and uh, the size of the bone, to be uh, quite honest. Um, so I want to spread out the bones as much as possible so that uh, all the bones get an even coloring. You do also want to make sure that you're careful because this uh, particular type of meat, uh, rib, has uh, quite a good amount of fat. So uh, when you're actually shifting things inside the oven, that fat might fall to the bottom of the oven. Uh, so just be careful. Uh, but now we're just simply going to... Place them in the oven. And we will come back and take a look at them in 30 minutes. Uh, if they are not quite ready in 30 minutes, we'll, we will add additional additional time as needed. Uh, but this is now the waiting game. So after 30 minutes, our bones are definitely getting some color. You do see that it is rendering some fat, uh, as you can see it dripping down. Uh, just be very careful with that fat. Uh, they can, however, go a little bit longer just to get a little bit more of that caramel color. Uh, and I'll rotate, rotate them uh, so that all sides get nice and even. Uh, nice thing about these ribs is that we're actually uh, going to use the meat once the stock is finished so that we can actually make a nice uh, little dish for ourselves. Um, so, and again, for another 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll be on our way to making our brown beef stock. After those additional 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to take out our bones. And as you can see, they have achieved a nice color now. I'm gonna place them over on the counter. Just be very careful with that fat. We close our oven door. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to place our bones inside the pot. Now that once the bones have been placed inside the pot, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually use this sheet tray again. Uh, with the fat, maybe drain a little bit of that fat so that we can proceed with our next step. And just be very careful as you drain it. I'm gonna drain it into this bowl. You still wanna make sure you have a little bit of fat in there. So, 
We're gonna use that to actually start roasting our mirepoix. Now, in our white stock, our mirepoix was not roasted. But being that this is a brown stock, we're going to roast our onions and carrots and celery into that same tray that we used to roast our bones. Uh, we're gonna allow this to roast in 425 degrees uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, in which then, after it's roasted, we're going to add the tomato product uh, and continue to roast it for an additional five minutes until we get a nice red brick color. So as I place this in the oven, what I'm going to do next is actually start my stock. And again, we start with cold water. And I'm gonna add my gallon and a half of water. Now, it is important that as the stock goes, we skim our stock. Now, we just took out a bunch of oil from that pan. So there's still some oil in these bones and that oil will rise to the top. So it is important that we continuously skim our stock uh, from any impurities, any oil, so that we have a crystal clear stock. And that is why I have my bowl and my ladle here. Now this stock, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna take anywhere between six to eight hours in order for it to appropriately develop the flavor that it should. Uh, the mirepoix that we're actually cooking right now is not going to be added until maybe the fifth or sixth hour uh, of this stock going. So now we wait. So our vegetables have roasted for 15, about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna take them out. Uh, they're not quite done yet. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add the tomato paste uh, to the tray along with all these vegetables. I'm gonna make sure that I get all these vegetables uh, with that tomato paste, right? Now this process that I'm doing right here, uh, in French is called uh, to pincé, sorry. Uh, and this is technically now called a pincage. It's not a mirepoix anymore, it's a pincage. Uh, it is a combination of onions, celery, carrots, and tomato paste. So now once we've combined all our vegetables with the tomato paste, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back in the oven for, I would say, an additional five minutes and what we want to see is this tomato product get a little darker almost uh, almost like a brick like color um, so we'll place that in the oven for five minutes um, and then once it's done uh, we are actually gonna take it out of the oven and reserve it uh, we will be adding it back to our stock uh, after the stock has been going for five hours so at this point, let's go back to our stock. And what we see here is that you start to see uh, some impurities in the stock. You start to see some fat. Uh, and what we want to make sure is that, well, right now, uh, the heat is at a high flame. Once this stock starts to uh, simmer uh, and uh, get to that point where it's boiling, we want to make sure that we lower it down to a low simmer. Uh, because this stock will be going for uh, approximately five to six hours. So we do need to make sure that that water is controlled. And uh, along with that, what we do wanna make sure is that we're actually skimming uh, throughout the process of this stock. Uh, now skimming should happen the first hour to hour and a half. Uh, after that, uh, the stock should be cleared and uh, allowed to be uh, let go for the remainder of the period. Additionally, when we finish the stock, Sorry, not when we finish the stock, but as the stock is going, we do want to make sure that we put it to the side. And again, this is called depuage. We want to depuage the stock so that the stock actually, all those impurities go to one side and the stock is nice and clear. So our stock has been going now for approximately uh, five hours now. Uh, at this point, I'm going to add my 
Pinsage. Now again, the Pinsage is the Mirepoix with the added tomato product. And I am also going to add our sachet, right? Our parsley, thyme, bay leaf, black pepper, corn, and garlic. Uh, one thing that you can note, if you can see, is that this stock, there's still some fat, right? Uh, and that fat is going to be a little bit tricky to take out. But the best solution is that once we allow this stock to actually cool down, uh, that fat will solidify and it will rise to the top. What that will allow us to do is to actually remove that fat much easier uh, than uh, using our ladle right now and taking out fat and liquid, right? So at this point, again, I'm just going to add my pinsage here. And again, we roasted this for five minutes. I'm gonna distribute it into the bones. Uh, and if you can smell, you can smell this stock is already uh, smelling very fragrant. And we're also going to add our parsley stems, our garlic, our black peppercorns, our thyme, and our bay leaf. Now, uh, it can be in a cheesecloth, uh, but since I don't have a cheesecloth, I'm just going to add the herbs and spices as such. Uh, later, we will strain the stock uh, and we will remove anything that is unwanted. So now that we've added these two things to our stock, we'll let it come uh, to simmer and we'll allow it to simmer for an additional hour to an hour and a half. Um, and again, the key is time and patience. Uh, for a great stock. So our stock has gone for seven hours. Now it's time to strain it and to get the finished product. Uh, I am going to reserve the bones that I used for the stock so that I can pull the meat and actually use the meat uh, for a dish. Uh, once we strain the stock, uh, we are going to strain it through two strainers into a container. We're going to cool it down to the appropriate temperature, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we are going to save it for a later use. Uh, we will eventually make Espanol, another mother sauce, from this brown stock. So we have had some water evaporation, which we anticipated happening in, happening uh, since this did go for seven hours. Uh, there is still some liquid here that we will eventually move over to our stock. Uh, and I did mention that uh, this layer of fat on the top will solidify once this is cooled down and it will be easier to remove that layer of fat. Uh, but this, ladies and gentlemen, is your brown stock and it's ready for sauces uh, stocks, um, sauces, soups, and other applications.